Okay, okay, now now we're actually starting to get into the stuff where we will see uh, these concepts in all of the higher level physics classes, quantum mechanics, particle physics, any of the high energy stuff, it's, it's really cool. Uh, we're moving on to this section dealing with gauge transformations. And if we're unfamiliar with gauge transformations, go ahead and see the description where I can actually put some more thought into the words that I want to use instead of just rambling off how to use the... Uh, concepts in these problems um i like to talk a lot so bear with me as i learn to do these as well <laughs> all right so for this particular problem we have two parts a find the fields the charges and the current distributions corresponding to v r of t equals zero and a r of t equal negative one over four pi epsilon naught q t over r squared in the r hat direction that looks kind of funky but we'll go ahead and deal with it Part B, use the gauge function, lambda equal negative 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught qt over r to transform the potentials and comment on the results. Okay, so off the bat, we already know that this looks kind of funky and kind of inverted to what we normally see. So let's see how we deal with it. What we need to know is that the fields from the potentials are given by E which is our normal take the negative gradient of the scalar potential and minus the time derivative of the vector potential. B is just a curl of the vector potential. Good to go there. However, our gauge transformation statement says that uh, we can add with impunity any scalar, uh, gr the gradient of any scalar lambda, so long as we simultaneously subtract the time derivative of the scalar from the scalar potential. Uh, so you see... Our new a prime is equal to a plus gradient lambda. V prime is equal to v minus d lambda dt. Important, important, important. Let's go ahead and chug this through. So part a, our fields, well, if we take the gradient of the scalar, we get zero. And if we take the time derivative, we see we get the negatives canceling and the t goes bye-bye in the derivative. So we're left with exactly what we expected for kind of a point charge. 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q over r squared in the r hat direction. Similarly, b is take the curl of this, which equals 0. That makes sense because a point charge isn't moving. But we know from previous exercises that this tells us to be careful. Uh, because of the t factor and that vector potential, we know that rho is equal to q isolated at the origin, hence the Dirac delta. Okay, but J itself, we don't have any current density flowing, so that is zero. And what we see is that this funny set of potentials for a stationary point charge Q at the origin. Okay, we kind of saw that with E right off the bat. Um, so that's kind of cool that we get the fields we expect for point charge at the origin without using the uh, vector, the scalar potential that we were expecting in a vector potential of zero. Okay. So for part B, what we see here is that V prime is equal to zero minus the time derivative of the negative scalar, which of course we see the, the time derivative and the negatives cancel and the time derivative takes away the T. So the scalar here is one over four pi epsilon naught Q over R. That looks familiar to us. A prime here tells us that if we have uh, negative 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught qt over r squared in the r hat direction, plus the gradient of this negative scalar, well, the negative with the 1 over r gives us a negative back, and we see that we, that goes to r squared in the gradient uh, bracket. And you see that we have a minus and a plus, and they cancel, and we get our typical zero. This is fascinating. This gauge function transforms the funny-looking potentials into the ordinary potentials of the stationary point charge. How cool is that? What this tells us is that we can exploit these um, gauge conditions or gauge symmetries, tra gauge transformations, whatever words we want to use, to uh, influence the uh, curl and divergence so we actually know what the fields are. And it gives us freedom to manipulate these things uh, within our field structure to have a better uh, opportunity to deal with things. We'll see another example of two very well-known gauge conditions here very soon.